Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Beck, and this is my show, It's Not About Us. And, you know, recently, uh, the main subject that I keep going back to when I, I speak to you directly and I'm not interviewing someone is about the Wayne Project, the WeAreNotEnemies.com project that um, came to me through God's voice. And uh, I, I just know that, you know, when he speaks to me, uh, it's not like he's speaking out loud to me. Some people misunderstand that. Um, but he puts things on your heart. He speaks to you through the Holy Spirit, gives you wisdom and knowledge and and different things that you need to understand and know, or he uses you, shares with you something that God wants everyone to know. Well, I am but one person. Uh, fortunately, I ended up teaming up with Dr. Ben Carson, who is also spreading all of the Wayne Project. And uh, uh, actually, he came up with the title, which is really neat. But um, I wanted to break some things down for you. Uh, I, I've done a couple different shows on this. Uh, but today, I want to break down the crux of what God was saying. When he says, you know, if my people uh, who are called by my name would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and uh, seek my face. Uh, let's talk about what the wicked ways are. You know, I guess you could say that there are a lot of things that could be wicked. Um, hurting someone, uh, everything from saying something bad about somebody, spreading gossip or something like that, uh, right down to murder or... Um, uh, causing people, you know, uh, destruction of some type, um, injuring them physically or mentally. These things are so important to understand and know. Those, those, those aren't nice. So we think of those as wicked. But God said when, when he talked to me was that the really true wickedness of the world is not forgiving others. And that's why the scripture says, then will he heal our land? Because we need to forgive others. You know, it's really easy when you do something wrong, you might not even realize you did it. We talked about this in the last session. But there's also times when you do something like hate or say something evil about someone else because you're angry at them. And there's being divisive with people, you know, wishing bad things on people. You know, even our minds, God says in so many places in the Bible, he talks about how our mind, what we think, can actually be the sin. So you can't just sit around and look at somebody and think bad things about them and it not affect who you are and your relationship with Christ. You have to remember that you answer for not only your actions, but your thoughts. And so as humans, it's really tough, you know, but guess who controls your mind? Not the other person, you do. And so it's one of the biggest challenges I've ever faced in my life is learning not to be able to think bad thoughts of other people, you know, because we all do it. Even if it's in that split moment when somebody accidentally runs into you. In that first moment, if you're injured and hurt, you might have a negative thought about them. And negative thoughts about other people is not the right thing to do. Because God says specifically that we are to pray for our enemies. And let me read the scripture here that points that out, I think, the best. And um, it, it is in uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And it's in my Bible, it says, love your enemies. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That was said in the Old Testament. But I say to you, now this is in red letter, which means Jesus is saying it. But I say to you, love your enemies, 
Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Isn't that true? For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do you even, do you not even, the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow. I mean, that is a wonderful scripture. It says it right there that we are to forgive our enemies. We are to forgive those that have hurt us, those that have physically, mentally, or verbally abused us in any way. And I know that's hard. I was just talking to somebody recently about how hard it is. But let me tell you, there is nothing more freeing. There is nothing more wonderful than to be able to truthfully and honestly in your heart and in your mind both to forgive somebody that hurt you, even if they did it intentionally. Even if on their side, it was hate, anger, viciousness. That doesn't mean that you can't forgive them of all three of those or anything else. And when you do, it's like this huge weight is lifted off of you. Because if they do that to you, who feels it? You do. It's not the other person. They, they felt good about what they said to you. They're the ones that are lost. They're the ones that don't understand and know God's word. They're the ones that, you know, feel the um, joy of being mean to somebody. They actually feel that. They actually feel like um, you deserved it, okay? But inside, you're crushed. You're hurt. You're aching. You have, your spirit is fallen. And and you, you get angry then and and you you might feel you know like you want to get them back or you want to explain it to them well people who are like that you can't explain anything to them because their mind is not open and that's why we're supposed to pray for people to be forgiven because when you pray for them to be forgiven god can open their mind you can't but he can he can help them to take the veil from the front of their face. And he can help them see the love and how wonderful it is to feel that freeing thing, to know that I did something wrong to somebody and I want to make up for it instead of I want to get back. And that is so wonderful. I love that God gives us these opportunities. And um, one more scripture here that I want to share with you and isn't it something that it's a page away because we're uh, we're actually talking about the Sermon on the Mount and he gives us many things that say blessed are but the two that stick out in my mind as I think about forgiveness it says blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy so showing mercy to somebody is showing forgiveness. So if I give somebody mercy, if I forgive them for stealing from me or being angry at me or hurting somebody I love, it says, I will obtain mercy. So that will come back to me. And then the other one is, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. I want to be called a son of God, a child of God. I mean, that, that there is just so huge. And peacemakers are not the people that are going to play get back or, or you know, uh, let, let's see if I can make them feel as bad as they made me feel. No, peacemakers want to say things like, I know that they hurt your feelings, but guess what? 
maybe they didn't realize that what they said to you hurt your feelings. Or maybe they're having a bad day and they said something in frustration that they wouldn't normally even think to say. Maybe they're at home feeling bad because afterwards they thought about it and realized that they said something that wasn't right. You know, we've all been there. So I think it's really important that we understand that the Wayne Project is to understand we're not enemies, we're God's children. We're not to be enemies. We're not to hate. We're not to be unforgiving or unkind or judge. We're supposed to be as merciful to others as God has been to us. Jesus showed mercy like never ever will be felt again when he died on that cross for us, when he died for our sins, when he forgave us, wanted us to be forgiven so we could live in eternity with God the Father and Jesus the Son. What a beautiful thing. I want to be there. I'm excited about it. I want you to be excited about the Wayne Project. I want you to go to We Are Not Enemies, sign up, doesn't cost you a thing, but it'll tell you all the wonderful ways that you can experience these feelings of joy and peace. Like I said the last time, having peace beyond all understanding that only God can give us is the most awesome relief, release, um, joyful uh, thing in your life because when you're not at peace, when you're wrestling with your thoughts, when you're wrestling with the things of your heart, when you're wrestling with the devil because you're trying to defeat something that you can't defeat on your own, God will be with you. Jesus will walk with you and he and only he can make it better. You know, I pray for everyone that watches my show and those that don't. I love it in Corinthians and in some of the other books of the Bible where the followers of Jesus are out spreading his word and they're constantly saying they pray for each other. Let's pray for each other today. Let's constantly be in prayer for others. Those that are, are saved and God's children that God will bless them even more and show them their his peace. And let's pray for those that are lost by praying for forgiveness for them and asking God to open their hearts and eyes so that they too can meet with us someday in heaven. I just think that's so powerful. I just wanted to share this with you because I want you to better understand that when God says he will heal our land, which is his earth, which is where we live, the place that he gave us that is so beautiful and so so wonderfully made that it, 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 it lightens our heart and, and, and our eyes are full of joy as we see the sunsets and the ocean and all the beautiful mountains. Everything that he's given us, it could all be gone tomorrow in the blink of an eye if we don't forgive each other and do what's right. So love your enemies, pray for your enemies, pray, pray for them to find God, pray for them to have it revealed to them that they've been lied to. Pray for them to understand that, you know, God is the only one in control in reality. He's the only one that can save us. He's the only one bigger, stronger, and more amazing than any evil or any evil one, whether it's a demon or it's the devil himself. God can save us. Please pray for our enemies and pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ that they too will have a beautiful day today. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time.